Hi, it's Wanda. Okay, I'm gonna use some colors here that are in the same family. And this is what they're made from. And this may look very brown on the camera. It's my burnt sienna. And it has a clay color, but it's not a terracotta orangey clay color. It's more like um, an old red brick kind of clay color. So I have used it with white to get a light tone that's very, very pale pink, a mid-range. And these, they're kind of pink, but they have like a brown undertone. So here's the darkest color. They're a little thicker than you might want. They, they do make a little puddle on top. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that kind of disappears, takes it about a second or two to disappear. And then with that, I'm gonna use the Chroma Red Metallic. It's the Chroma Molten Metals Red Metallic. And since metallics seem to act kind of strange if you get them too thin, I'm gonna leave that a little thicker. And I wanted to show you, this is a couple of paintings that I did as pour overs. And they've been hanging in my bedroom and I really like the colors. Um, and I, want, I hope that you can see the flash of that metallic. Um, these are basically the same colors as I have right here. I may have put a little pink in with one of these to make it a little more pink. Um, like this pink right in here. That maybe have some magenta in it or something. But you can tell um, the, all these darts are the, are the right red metallic. And I don't think I had any silicone at all in these, but they've been hanging there for months. And you know, the one that you can tell from the, the texture underneath it, that something had already been poured over it. But I wanted to show you those. So that was my inspiration for trying this tonight. And even though I don't have that pinky pink, I still think that hopefully this will be light, medium, and dark and then the red will give it some jazz. I have not decided exactly how I want to do the pour. I think I may just do a flip and drag because it's easy, but I don't have anything. This is a dry canvas. It takes about eight ounces. This is a 14 by 14. So seven ounces for the top, but I eight, you know, seven and a half or eight to go over your edges. Um, now, in the past, there are times when I have watered down Floetrol and used that just to wet my canvas. And if you don't have the Floetrol full strength, you basically, it dries clear. But if you do one where, say for instance, if you did a dirty pour and you did like a ribbon pour and that Floetrol was in the middle and it was kind of strong, it'll fade into the colors that are there beside of it. It'll separate them and it will show. So keep that in mind if you want to use Floetrol to just wet your canvas to get the paint to move. And that's why I water it down now. And I saw that from Paul Stardart where he watered his down and it looked like it worked really good. And I thought, well, I'm gonna do that from now on. So I guess I'm just gonna layer. Like I said, these are a little thick. I think I'm gonna go light, dark, lighter, dark, and see how that goes. With a little metallic. Actually, more than a little. Go dark again. I do want that dark up against that metallic. That might Fade it out. We'll see. I always second guess myself to the end of the worlds and back. Dark, medium, light. Some more red. Get 
in my cup about where it needs to be, I think. And these are made with titanium white, which is a very opaque white because it's basically a block out white. It's not just like a white paint. It's what you use for bases and to block out other colors and to mix with other colors. So, add a little of that, see if I can't use up all that. If I have a little left, I'd rather it be the dark. Just because there's more of it. I don't think I'm gonna put any more metallic though. So. If I do, maybe just a drizzle. Just a little drizzle. Had to wet my canvas because it was really saggy. Still a little bit saggy. But it had the puckered corners really bad. So I sprayed it and then it looked even more weird. So I had to go down into the corners with some water, just squirting from the back, just with my spray bottle, letting it run down there. Let that sit for a little bit, so. I hope this is plenty of paint. But of course, if not, I have a little bit left. So I can always use that too. So. I should have sprayed the inside of that cup with some blaster or some WD-40. Put some down in there and then wiped it out. It would help the paint to turn loose, but then it might have given me cells. So I'm not really crazy about cells. I mean, I, I, I would like it if I could do really good cells, pretty cells. I uh, haven't had a lot of luck with that. Mine always just seems to stretch out, so um, I'm going to have to keep practicing. See what I can find out. That's a flip cup that's a flip and drag. It's not a flip and drag because that's what you do with negative space. I just realized I probably said earlier, I'm gonna do a flip and drag. This is the stick that I used on the metallic, so. I think it's okay to do a paint in painting with just one theme color, you know, various shades of blue or blue and teal, turquoise and stuff like that. You don't have to always have like six or seven or eight different colors um, in one cup and in one painting. To have a pretty painting. Looks like all my metallics on that side. I hope not. See if some more of it pops up somewhere when we stretch. Looks a little ridgy under there, so obviously the, the the metallic is lying underneath the other paint because it was a little heavier. You know what? I actually like all of this. It, it, to me, it almost looks beachy. I'm not crazy about that, so I think I'm gonna tilt that off first.
me see if I have something I can use as a corner catcher. Okay, this piece of foam core, I just slashed the back side of it. Now I'm gonna hold it like this. looks too yucky later I'll see about getting some more of it off hmm I want to keep this metallic so I guess this lighter color is gonna have to go It's still coming off over here on this side. I'll try to keep that from rolling over on itself and me losing all of that metallic. Use some of that leftover paint. some of that metallic and I'm gonna go off the edge so even though I stretched it all that way over here and down there I still had paint up here Hope you all got to see that. Now, the cells are coming up that have the metallic in them. Because I stretched that paint that was thinner off the top, the metallic sunk. So, touch that up just a tad. Back side looks good, that side looks good. Definitely different. Let's tilt that back a little bit. Not as much of the light came through. I didn't have as much of that paint, but not as much of that came through as I thought it would. 
So I'm gonna stretch it back that way because I'm not really crazy about this whole design right here. There's certainly enough paint left on the canvas. It didn't, I was worried I wasn't gonna have enough, but it did spread, so. I don't know if the light from the ceiling is bothering you or not. I hope some more of this red pops up. Since it's not silicone, I'm just getting rid of bubbles. I'm not bringing up any cells caused by silicone because there's no silicone in this. Not a lot dripping off under there. Not a lot went off, you know, real far up under there. You have to be careful when you do this because you can touch the bottom of your canvas right there and mess up your edge. So when I do it, I try to tilt down or I actually use a palette knife quite a bit and that has more of an angle on it so I can get up under there and get all that paint out without having to touch that edge. Because even to me, even on one of these, that's not that deep. If it's got a pretty edge, you don't necessarily need a frame. So, a little disappointing that my Metallic didn't come through any better than it did. I probably should have made it a little thinner than I did on this one. And you may not like this at all. I mean, I like soft colors. I think this would look pretty in a bedroom or a bathroom, but it's not everybody's thing. I mean, a lot of people like bright colors. So it's um, just one that I wanted to try and I definitely did not get as much metallic as I did in this. And I do think that I did add some pink to one of the shades that I mixed for this because this doesn't have that much that really looks pinky. Right in there some and right in there some, that's about it. And I don't even know, that might be coming from that metallic paint that's underneath it. So next time I would definitely mix some pink. Um, a magenta, a, a little bit of magenta, not a whole lot. But thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. And I appreciate you spending some time with me. And I invite you to come back and watch me again. And feel free to share this with anybody that you think might be interested. I appreciate it if you subscribe. And um, thank you so much for watching me. And have a good night. Okay, it's been about six minutes now, and it looks much more brown to me in the camera than it does in me standing here looking at it. So that seems kind of weird. And it looks very beige and brown in the camera, where in person, it definitely has like a pink tint to it. I shouldn't have wiped off the... Um, Boom. <laughs> well, you can see, like right here, up against the white, it still may look brown to you, but it is more of a pink up against that puppy pad where it's white. It's like a pink, but with a brown undertone. So you see both when you look at it. But anyway, this is how it turned out. I still think most of this under here is that metallic. So I don't know if it's gonna show when it dries. I hope it shows when it dries, but this is how it turned out. So, thank you for joining me. Come spend some time with me again sometime. Thank you.